Hello, my name is Antonio Olmos. I am a photojournalist. The hardest part about being a, a, a street photographer, or really any kind of photographer, is, is approaching people to photograph them. People find it very off-putting. Uh, even if they're asking permission, they find it very embarrassing to go up to somebody and say, can I take your picture? Uh, but my, f my experience has been that most people love being photographed, even if they're surprised they're being photographed. And if they're, even if they're bothered by it, if you tell them why you're doing it, they'll be quite happy. They'll, be, they'll take, oh, I just wanted to know. Sometimes it's just the idea of being photographed confuses them, and they'll give you a kind of a confused look. I've never had a situation, I've been photographing for 20 years, and I've never had anybody want to thr threaten me or punch me out or do anything for taking pictures on the street. The only thing I say things is like, don't be sneaky. Don't hide. You know, don't like shoot from behind corners or behind, you know, don't hide. Be very, you know, be very obvious, but at the same time be very quick. Yeah, so one of the shots we got today was one of the la a lady on a bus and the, the bus covered the light up, so I instantly had to change my exposure. Which I did. Uh, it was much darker. It's uh, it was three or four stops. The exposure was a 60th at F4. And uh, I had like a split second to photograph it because the bus was moving when I shot the picture. But I got the picture I wanted, which was very nice. It's a nice contrast because she's holding up a... a a shopping bag with a young lady on it and she's a much older not so young lady <laughs> so I, I quite liked it you know and then uh, there's a sort of sadness and melancholy to the picture which is what I look for in, in street photography the secret to being a street photographer whether you want to be humorous or, or you know have warmth in your pictures or make sad pictures melancholy pictures like I want to make is that you have to think like five seconds ahead at least you know you know you have to see the picture coming because by the time you see it and you haven't taken a picture it's gone one of the things I say to people all the time is that when you're shooting you're taking notes. Most pictures you take are going to be bad, okay? And if you accept that, you'll just trust yourself to take chances. If you think every picture has to be good, you're going to constantly impose these restrictions on yourself and you're not going to take any good pictures. So I'm just taking notes. Hopefully that some of those notes will lead to something really well, a great photograph. Sometimes they won't. When I go out in the streets, when I'm shooting manual, the first thing I do is I look at the light and I Take a, uh, I take a picture, and once the situation looks right on the screen, I stop looking at the manual settings and just start taking pictures. You can shoot great pictures on automatic. I've had to shoot pictures on automatic for various reasons, but 90% of my work is on, on manual because I want to know what I'm doing, and I want to control the whole photographic process from the framing to the technical. I like dark pictures, for example. If you look at my website, you'll see a lot of moody, dark pictures. Now, if I had shot those pictures on automatic, they wouldn't look that way. My favorite photograph in the world is an out-of-focus, underexposed picture by Henry Cartier Bresson. Now, in every respect, it's a technically flawed photograph, and yet it's the most beautiful photograph I've ever seen. I've been looking at it for 20 years, and I never get tired of looking at it. I can't put the definition of what makes a good photograph or what I'm looking for. I'm looking, I'm looking for a good photograph. I'm looking for something that will please me. But what that is, it's a, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I know when I see it. <laughs>